Okay, welcome to this talk about Jakarta E10. Uh, I've titled it uh, Modern and Lightweight Cloud Application Development. Uh, my name is Eva Grimstad, and I'm the Jakarta E Developer Advocate at Eclipse Foundation. And uh, these are my social media coordinates if you want to follow me and, or engage with me after the talk. Um, I'm a Java champion. Uh, I'm involved in uh, a bunch of open source foundations and organizations like the JCP, uh, the Eclipse Foundation, Jakarta, Apache, and I run a, lo a local Java user group in Malmö in Sweden. So Jakarta 10 was released in September last year. And uh, uh, this release is the first release of Jakarta 10 at the Eclipse Foundation that actually had some features in it. And uh, because the other ones were just about getting everything uh, up, up and running. And Jakarta E is all about specifications. And, and specifications in Jakarta E, that's a specification document. It could be generated from the Java doc or something, but it's at least uh, some textual form that describes the specification. It's an API that is uh, available on, on Maven Central or any other place you would download stuff. And it's a TCK or, or uh, technology, uh, test compatibility kit. And, and this is the, 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 the test suite that tests that uh, implementation actually implements the requirements in the specification. And it also tests that you are actually providing the, the uh, correct API with signature tests. And compatible implementations is an implementation that implements the specification. And in order to have a final specification, we need at least one open source implementation of the specification. And when we have that, we can ratify it as final, and any implementation can have any license, uh, commercial or open source or anything. But we need at least one open source implementation. And Jakarta is a lot of specifications. Uh, and, and all the blue one here uh, were updated for 10. And, and you can see there are some, some version number. We try to do, do some sort of semantic versioning here. So the dot zeros are major updates. They may have backwards uh, incompatible changes. Most of them don't. That's why we sort of do semantic versioning. Uh, and, uh, but uh, the dot one releases are minor updates from previous versions. And there is one uh, yellow down in the corner here, CDI Lite, which is a new specification or it's actually not a specification on its own, it's a part of a CDI, but we kind of want to highlight it as a, as a new specification. The gray ones weren't updated for, for 10, it's the same version as we're in 9. So if we scrap away the more enterprise-y uh, specifications, we're left with a set of specifications that are targeting more traditional web applications. And this is the Jakarta E10 web profile. And Web Profile has been with us since uh, Java EE6. So it's not a new thing, but it's a subset of the platform. And if we take away the traditional webby things, we're left with uh, a, a stack of specifications that are suitable for microservices, headless services, or, or whatever you want to call them, uh, RESTful endpoints. And these are the, the, uh, uh, the new Jakarta E10 core profile. And, and this is brand new in 10. It's the first time we introduced a new profile since uh, back in Java EE6. I'll, I'll go through a couple of these specifications, uh, uh, just handpicked a couple of them, and, and show some w what's coming in them. And then we'll dive into some demos and, and more about the core profile. And I'll also go through, uh, I actually added a new demo. I decided on the plain way here to add a spring demo. How many spring developers? Some of you. Okay, so I'll, I'll do some spring code here, and, and, and unless I burst out in flames and disappear, I'll be able to finish the talk. So security has some updates for this uh, specification. It's a major update, uh, uh, and they, they did some deprecation of some APIs. Uh, but the, the, the thing they added that is new here is the OpenID Connect support. So you have, may have done it before in a proprietary way, but now we have a standard way of doing OpenID Connect with Jakarta EE. The, the other, there are actually three specifications for security in Jakarta e. It's the Jakarta e security, which is the one US application developers would uh, use when you, when you develop applications. And then you have the authorization and, and authentication specifications. But these are kind of more SPI level specifications that the implementers would use to support uh, what the, the security specification provides you. And, and the changes there were made for, uh, as a foundation for future work. The OpenID Connect 
uh, support is done by this very small, simple annotation called OpenID Authentication Mechanism Definition. Thank God for code completion, right? But, but, so you don't have to remember it, but it, it's a, it's a uh, uh, set of, uh, of, of properties is m way more than what I've uh, showed here, but it's everything you need to uh, configure your, your provider for OpenID Connect and, and uh, secure your application that way. So security in Jakarta is all about doing it within the application. It's not, not non-external configuration needed. So persistence. Jakarta Persistent is a, a minor update. It's adding features and evolving the API. And uh, the thing they added that community has asked for, for a long time is UIDs as basic Java types. So, so now you can directly uh, use UIDs for, in this example, as uh, primary keys without doing the mapping between UIDs with, with the uh, uh, Java util UID. It, it just generates it for you automatically. RESTful bus services uh, also were planning to do a backwards incompatible 4.0 release, but they backed a little and did a 3.1 because they wanted to maintain compatibility for Jakari 10. For Jakari 11, there will uh, most likely be a 4.0 that will break things. But, uh, but uh, this one is maintaining compatibility. One thing that I added is something the community has asked for for a long, long time, and that is support for multi-part form data. Uh, and you may have done this in a proprietary way with uh, REST Easy or Jersey before, but now uh, you can do it standard and move it uh, between the implementations. Another thing they added uh, is the Java SE Bootstrap API. And this is the possibility to create a RESTful uh, Jakarta application without an application server. So you can bootstrap it directly and, and distribute it in, in a JAR file if you want to. And I'll show a demo with this. And what I'm going to do is just use uh, the REST Easy uh, implementation of it, uh, just a simple hard coded message, but uh, show how to bootstrap this, um, this uh, simple uh, application. So the, the, uh, the application is called BootyDook, and it has, as you can see, it is a jar. So, so, so that's worth uh, noting. And uh, I have the, the, uh, the um, I'm just using, using the shade plugin here. You can use anything you want to do to create the runnable jar. Uh, and it has the, the RESTful Web Services API. And, and then I need to add the, the implementations as well, since I'm, I'm not running it in an application server, so I, I need to add it. And for, for REST Easy, I'm adding the, the, the core REST Easy, and then uh, Undertow for, uh, for the web server and JSON binding to produce uh, JSON. The application is, is very simple. It is a, just a get endpoint that returns a, a JSON as a hard-coded message. And, and the, 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 the magic happening here is in, in the main class. And you can use any class you want as, a, as your main class. Here I'm using the, the, the jar REST application class, and that's perfectly fine. So the only thing I need to do is, is to add a main method. And when I have a main method, there are three things uh, I have to do. The, the first thing I have to do is just instantiate the, the application. The, the second thing is to configure it. And there are a, way, a wide array of, of configuration options. So I'm just setting the root path and import here. And the third thing is to start the application. Oh, sorry. So, so to, to start it, I simply called sebootstrap.start and pass in the, the uh, application and the config. And I just went for, uh, wait for somebody to, to press uh, control C uh, for me. I just add, have to add the interrupted exception as well. So that's all there is to it. So if I, if I run this one, uh, first I'll, I'll just uh, compile it. So I'll j just uh, do the, the package. And, and it packages as a, as a jar file, uh, which I, I can then run uh, as a jar. Yeah. And, uh, oh, sorry. Um, why didn't it create a, oh, sorry. I have a Java dash jar. So maybe spell it correctly as well. So it, it starts up and this is fairly quickly. And, and uh, it, it's running on uh, the slash hello endpoint. And you can see it, it displays the message. So it's not, not magic you go, go in there. But you can see it's these three simple steps uh, to, um, 
initialize the application in a jar file, so you don't need an application server and can run it from command line. Then let's talk about the core profile. And the core profile is created to target smaller runtimes. So, so you, you've already seen the kind of the smallest thing that you can do the, with the SE Bootstrap API, but you also have the core profile to target smaller runtimes, and it's this set, set of specifications to create microservices. That's what the, the purpose of core profile is. And today we have three compatible uh, products of core profile, and that is Open Liberty, Payara, and Wildfly. And you may say, well, isn't that the regular application servers? And it is. And, uh, but, but all of these are kind of possibility to, to use uh, their module system to just squeeze them down to be smaller. But this wasn't the application we actually had in mind when we created the core profile. The applications we're hoping to certify here are, are application, uh, or a framework like, like Helidon or Quarkus or Micronaut, et cetera. And I, and I think both Quarkus and Helidon should be fairly close to actually being able to certify as core profile compatible. So these are the kind of applications that we are targeting with the core profile. And the key of core profile is CDI Lite. And CDI Lite is a subset of CDI that is made to work in more restrictive environments. And with more restricting environments, what we're talking about is to, to be able to resolve all the dynamic features of CDI at build time rather than at runtime. So you may know that, that CDI is very starting things when you, when you deploy your service and start your server. But we want to resolve that at, at, at build time so you can use GraalVM to create native images. So that's the, the, the thought behind the, uh, the, um, uh, the CDR Lite specification. They also did a backwards incompatible change by, by changing the behavior of Beans XML. So that is something you need to be aware of if you're migrating from earlier versions of Java, uh, Java EE or Jakarta EE to Jakarta EE 10, is that Beans XML may cause you some problems, but it's very easy to uh, fix. And also, to be able to do all these dynamic things at build time, they created a new extensions API that is called build compatible extension that, that is kind of a drop-in replacement for portable extensions that you have in a regular CDI. I want to do a demo. And I, uh, how many here are using uh, Jakarta EE versions of before uh, EE8 or, or around there? A couple of you. And, and are using newer versions? Yeah, nine or ten. Yeah. So, 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 what I'm, uh, I'm going to do is take you uh, from E8 to to uh, nine, and then uh, eventually to ten. And I'm also going to do and uh, with this with um, a Spring application and show how this stuff actually impacts Spring. And the migration from from E8 to E9 uh, is is all about the namespace because that's where we did the the, the namespace switch from Java X to Jakarta. And, and th this is where it, 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 it affects the entire ecosystem and not only those that are using Jakarta EE directly, because you may be using Jakarta EE without actually knowing it. If you, for example, are using Spring Boot, you will be exposed to this. And that's because Spring are, are using, uh, under the cover, when you, when you start a Spring Boot application, you're, you're starting Jetty or Tomcat or similar web servers, and all of these have moved to the Jakarta namespace. So if you want to stay on the latest version, such as uh, Spring Boot 3, for example, it is on the Jakarta namespace. Even if you're just deploying a regular Tomcat application, if you want to move to Tomcat 10 or above, it's on Jakarta. So you have to, uh, to move to the Jakarta namespace. If you're using Hibernate ORM or Hibernate Validation, which is extensively used in Spring, you're going to change if you want to stay on the latest versions. So, so that's why this namespace change is so so, so kind of uh, attacking all the, the ecosystem. But luckily, there are ways to cope with this. And one of them is transformation. And, and transformation is, is if you don't have access to your, your source code, you can use the Eclipse Transformer or the Apache Tomcat migration tool or some other tools out there to just do the bytecode translation from from uh, 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 the Java X namespace to the Jakarta namespace. So this is something you can do without touching the code. Just drop the jar or war file into these transformers and they will do it for you. IDE supports this as well. So uh, IntelliJ has this migration from Java E to Jakarta E uh, that uh, does all the migration for you. So you don't have to, to actually do it manually. And you can do it uh, step by step 
uh, by following these six uh, simple steps. Uh, and you can do, use the IDE for the first two of them. And this is what I'm going to do in, in this application. It's available on GitHub. I'll show the link later as well. And the application is a, a Hello World application. It is retrieving a, a message from the database. It's using Jakarta Persistence to do that. It's, it's using Jakarta Enterprise Beans to have the, the business logic of, of the, the Hello message. And then I have a Jakarta REST endpoint that produces uh, JSON using Jakarta JSON binding. And also have the uh, Jakarta CDI extension to show that, but I'll, I'll, I'll go brief on the CDI extensions and rather uh, do the, the Spring demo. So this is the application I'm, I'm, I'm going to do, and I'm going to do uh, by doing these steps. And I'll do the first ones uh, in, in the ID. So I have the, the complete Duke application. Uh, you can see that it is on uh, Jakarta E8. And uh, the, the actual code is very similar to the greeting I showed you previously. If you look at the, the resource there, it's, it's a get uh, that, that produces application JSON. It's using a EJB called Duke service to, to find the actual greeting. And this uh, EJB, you can see that it is a GB by, by it has the stateless annotation. And, and it injects a, a repository class that is retrieving from the database. And the business logic here is to, to, to find all, then take the first one, or if there are none, hard code it. And, and the find all method in the repository is uh, using Jakarta Persistent Entity Manager and just using criteria language to, to select everything from the uh, Duke's greeting uh, table. And, and that table is defined in my entity here. It's a, a table called greeting. It has an ID message, an email, and getters and setters. There's also the, the CDI extension that just scans for the uh, at Duke's annotation uh, that, that I had in, in my, my uh, RESTful endpoint. So let's do the, this migration. And, and what I'm going to do first is just to simply upgrade this to Jakarta 9.1. Reload a POM, and you, you'll see I'm, I'm uh, getting a lot of, of uh, compilation changes because now I've, I've changed from, from uh, JavaX to, to Jakarta. So all my, my JavaX imports are failing. So what I can do then is to use the, uh, the ID to do this uh, migration of packages and uh, take it through. And this will take only the ones that are actually uh, needed. So, so you can see it. it it does it for me. So it's not that hard to do the change if you have all the code available. So that was the, the, uh, uh, the first two steps. And then uh, if you're using XML files, uh, the namespaces have changed as well. So in, in my application, I have one uh, uh, XML file, and that is the per persistent XML. And you can see here that it is using the old uh, jcp.org uh, namespace. So what I'm going to do is to update this to the new Jakarta EE namespace and, and do that with, for the, the uh, schema location as well. And the name at the actual file, let me see. We also changed from HHB to HBS. And, and the standard in Jakarta has always been, or and in Java EE historically, is to use the version number in the file, so you're absolutely sure that you're you, you're using the right thing. And now you can see the it, it actually validates here, uh, says that the version number is wrong, so uh, I have to update the version in my file, and it validates correctly. So if you're using WebXML, BeansXML, uh, PresenceXML, or other XML configuration files with the old jcp.org namespace, this is the refactoring you have to do there. It's just a, a search and replace and use the correct version. The next step is if I have some properties that are pre prefixed with JavaX. And in my case, I only have these two properties here, which is the, the uh, uh, properties to generate the test data for my application. So I just have to change the, the JavaX uh, prefix with uh, Jakarta. So it's very consistent all the way, so it's not that hard. The, then the, the, the last thing is to rename bootstrapping files, and that's for the uh, CDI extension. And the CDI extension here is, is in a file, it's a fully qualified class name, 
uh, for the extension, and it, it is in the file called Java X Enterprise SPI extension. So this one has to re be uh, renamed to uh, Jakarta. So there are no surprises in, in this refactoring. It's mostly a Java X to Jakarta, except, except the namespace, which is jsb.org, but, but it's, it's fairly straightforward anyway. So now I've done all the, the changes. And, and, uh, and uh, um, move this application to Jakarta E9. So let's uh, go ahead and, and deploy it. So I'll, I'll deploy it to a uh, LastWish 6 server, which is uh, Jakarta E9. So I'll just start it. And I'll add the artifact. There you go. And let's hope this runs. Deploy it there. So let's see. So it it, it displays the, the CDI extension message, and that's kind of an indication that it, that CDI was enabled and it, and it's working. So, and I think this one was on port uh, 80, 82, if I'm not yeah 8082. So if I navigate to um, port uh, 8082, uh, com complete the uh, hello, it says, howdy, Jakarta E, but it says Jakarta E 8. And, and that's, we're on 9, right? And, and that's the last step. And, 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 it, and in my, uh, uh, the verified dynamic and, and, and uh, data and, and content, and in my case, it's just a stupid message. But let's say that you are using some kind of cool mechanism for properties, and you're uh, concatenating strings with the Java X prefix or something then this is kind of the dy dynamic thing. So I've created applications where we have properties in databases, and maybe the properties may have the, the Java X namespace or something that will break. Or, or you're concatenating and doing reflection of some classes that with the Java X namespace. So this is kind of the dynamic uh, content. I in my case, it's just a message, so it's uh, very easy to fix. So, so I, I can uh, open the database, take the greeting here, uh, let's edit data. So you can see it says uh, how did Jakarta 8 and I can change this one to do uh, Jakarta 9. And uh, just uh, commit it to, to the data source and, and now it, it displays uh, the right version. So it's, it's kind of, for, for me it's sort of very simple, but it can be harder. But let's go further. So, so we have the, um, the, the, um, uh, the the um, uh, you, so I'm 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 using Jakarta nine, but I'm also using uh, uh, Java eight. And who's on eight? No, no one. Oh, you one oh, for you. Oh, who's on eleven? Yeah, good. Seventeen, twenty. Yeah. Oh, good. That's great. So eight. Nobody's using that except you. So uh, uh, what we're going to do is to 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 move from eight and to seventeen at least. And when I move to 17, I can also uh, start to use 17 features. Uh, and, and what I want to do is to, to um, I just have to, to refresh it there, so, uh, to, to use um, uh, records. So, so, so I'll, I'll uh, create a record. I'll call it uh, Duke's uh, greeting record. And um, there we go. So I, I really hope I have more than seven minutes left, or is, is it that fast? No. Uh, so, um, uh, and what I'm going to do is to, to add a, a message and a, a local date. Uh, date, so to, to the record. So, so, I, so I now have created a simple data object. And if you remember from my, 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 my uh, 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 endpoint here, I'm, I'm returning the, the greeting class, and that's not a good practice when you're returning things uh, to return your entity uh, up through your, uh, your REST endpoint. So I'm going to change this to, to return the, the, the greeting. Uh, then I have to change the, the uh, uh, EJB business method to also return a record. And when I've found the record from the database, and, and I've, I've uh, Found the first one. What I'm going to do is to map it uh, from uh, from uh, the greeting I'm finding in the database to a um, uh, greeting record with the uh, message 
and the uh, I'll just use uh, local date uh, of now. And also I have to, to check the, the hardcoding thing if, if I don't find anything in the database. So I'll just use local date now here as well. So what I'm doing here, and I'm doing a mapping from the, the entity to, to the data object, the greeting, and returning it up. There's one other thing I have to do as well, because Jakarta 9 doesn't really support 17. So, so uh, what I can do here is a little hack, because a, a greeting, the record, it will, it will generate a method, method here called message and, and date. But JSON binding in Jakarta 9 are following the, the, the Java Beans pattern, so it has to be a getter. And, and this, this uh, uh, message doesn't have a getter. It is a getter, but it's called uh, uh, just date and message. So I, I, can, I, I can kind of fool the system here by just calling these parameters get. And then the method would be get message and get data, and, and it uh, will actually work. So I've upgraded to 217. And uh, let me go to the, uh, uh, there, to, to the um, uh, server and uh, uh, deploy it again. We deploy. So it's up and running, and, and now it's, it's, it's back to E8 because, that's, uh, because I didn't change the, um, the database, but you can see it, it now re re uh, returns. It's called gate. It should be date, but uh, yeah, you get it. The next step I'm going to do is to, to um, let's call it, uh, is to take this one and move it to 10. So, so I've, I've now done the, uh, and, and then we'll do the spring afterwards. So, so the, the, uh, the uh, upgrade to, to 10 is actually very simple. It, it's more or less just to uh, change the version number. So I'm upgrading it to 10, and, and then I'll, I'll uh, just start it. But remember the beans XML thingy. Right, a, a, a empty beans XML has changed the behavior between nine and 10. And in my case, I'm actually relying on a non-existing beans XML, meaning the same things as an empty beans XML. And that will not work in 10 either. So if you don't have a beans XML file, you actually have to add it in 10. And it, it's a hassle, but there is some reasoning behind it. And, and so, so I'll, I'll just add a, a, an, an empty uh, beans XML. I'll just have to be in the right folder. So somewhere it's a beans XML. And you can see this one is, uh, it, it has the correct namespace. Uh, it's actually a version four. So, so uh, it's a, it's a, um, a CDI four and it's empty. Or uh, this one has the, the beans uh, mode of annotated, which is the default for, for, for so I can just remove it because an empty beans XML is what I need. So when I've done that, I can deploy it to a, a, a Jakari um, uh, a 10 server, which is uh, Glassfish 7. So I'll, I'll stop the server and I'll add the artifact. There you go. And let's go and deploy it. So it does the CDI is activated because of the beans XML file is there now. And now I, I can go here and uh, go to port 8080 this time. Let me see if I can see clearly here. 8080 slash complete dict, there we go. But now you see it, it says get date and guest message in my stuff because Jakari 10 actually support Java 17. So, so uh, in, in, if you're on 10, you can, you can actually get rid of that um, uh, ugly hack uh, we did with the, um, with the record and, and actually call it just message and date as, as you would. So this is kind of the only thing you, you need to think of when, when going through uh, to, to um, Jakari 10. So now I can and redeploy it. 
and uh, you, you can look at it. it. It says eight, but that's because I'm generating the test data. Don't do a drop and, and create tables and in production, but for demos you can. So I promised some, some Spring stuff. And what I'm going to do is to upgrade a Spring by, uh, app from Spring Boot 2 to Spring Boot 3 and show what Jakarta has to do with it. So, and this app is, is a little bit more than just a simple app. It, it is a Spring Boot 2 application, and it has a dependency that I have the source code for, and it also has a library that I don't have the source code for. And I'm going to move this over to Spring Boot 3. And remember, the, 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 the thing here is the, the dependency, I have the source, so I can actually do the migration there. But Dukelib is a, a, some external thing that I'm, they haven't done the Java X to, to Jakarta change yet. So I have to figure that out myself. So let's uh, look at this application. It, it's called uh, Duke Boot. And uh, you can see it's a Spring Boot 2 application by, by the version number in the starter parent. And I have these dependencies on Duke dependency and, and Duke lib, which is version 1. Um, the the uh, application is, is very simple. It's just a REST API where, where I, I have a post method where I can post in the user and create an account. And, and it just prints out some stuff. And I can also list all the users. Uh, and and you, you can see that it is a it has some 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 Jakarta dependencies there the way they they've been validation and and the Duke dependency is, is where I have the the uh, the actual uh, account entity which is using Jakarta persistence which is Hibernate and 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 this one. Uh, also, I also have the, the Duke's uh, repository, which is using uh, Spring Data to just uh, uh, do the simple stuff for me. But the Duke lib, I don't know what, what it is and, and what it contains. So, so, so that, that's kind of, I just have to go, go with it and, and see if it works. So I, I'm going to take this, uh, this, uh, this application and I'm just going to uh, uh, compile it. And uh, I'll run it and see, see uh, how it works. So, so it starts up. And uh, oh, I have something running on port 80. Let's go and kill stuff. So I'll start it again. So it, it's up and running, and, and now I can do some uh, uh, HTTP uh, post. Uh, for example, an, a, a, a user here with an e email address called duke at dukes.com. And, and it, it says um, 200, it worked. And you can see in, in the log that it created an account with ID 1. And, and if I change the domain to duke.se, it will also create, create a new one. That's fine. It's a valid email address. But if I do something that is not a valid email address, I'll get a bad request. Because it, it, it has the add email validation on the account uh, class. So, so this is kind of, uh, and as you can see, it, it doesn't create anything. And, and if I uh, do the, um, the uh, HTTP get get users. You can see I have two users: the .com and the .se. And the 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 reason why it doesn't validate is that I have this um, this um, uh, this this account entity, and and the on the user somewhere it it validates for an email, but. It just said the user has to be valid, but I don't really know what, what the user is because this user is in the Duclib class. So, but apparently I have some email validation for it. So if I want to uh, upgrade this application, it, it works fine. So I'll upgrade it to, to Spring with 3. And the first thing I'll do is just 
take whatever uh, version I have uh, in, in the cache here. It's, I think it's on 3 to 1 now, but let's go with th 305. That's fine enough. So what you'll see is I actually get compilation errors because I've upgraded the Spring version. And here, again, I, I can use this uh, there's uh, migrate packages because it, 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 it will do, do this uh, for me and, and, and fix it. So, so even with Spring, you can upgrade from Java to Jakari. That's pretty cool. So, so here you can see it, it fixed it for me. I also have to do the same in my dependency, the, the Duke dependency, uh, which is also uh, relying on, on Spring Boot 2. So I'll create a version 2 of this one. I'll upgrade this to, to uh, Spring Boot 305. And you can also see I'm using the Jakarta persistence that were supported by Spring Boot 2, which I also have to upgrade to the Jakarta E9 or 10 versions of, of it. And, and that would be uh, 3, 300 for persistence. And for validation, it's also a 302. And, and the implementations will follow from this. So, so now I've upgraded the, the dependencies also. And, and this one also will, will have some, some compilation errors somewhere in this one, all the persistent stuff. So, so I, can, I can do the migration for, for my dependencies as well. And, and of course, I could have done this for the entire project, but for the purposes of demos, I did it per dependency. So now I've created a version 2.0 of this Duke dependency. And if you remember, uh, the application, it has a Duke dependency. So now I'm on Spring with 3, but I have a version uh, uh, 2.0 of the Duke dependency, which I'd have to, to uh, uh, deploy to my, my Maven repository. And I'm just using the, uh, the local uh, Maven repository. So I go to Duke dependencies and do a Maven clean install, because I want it in my M2 folder. And now you can see here, uh, I have the uh, Dukes, uh, Duke Dep. So, so uh, sorry. So you can see I have a version 1.0 and 2.0 in the uh, Duke dependencies uh, directory. And in in uh, uh, the the Duke lib case, I don't have that that option since I don't have the source. So let's just go ahead and run it. That's the best way we can figure out uh, if it works. So I'll stop it. Uh, compile it again, and then I'll, uh, it said something, it has some failures. Uh, not a managed type. Yeah, so it, it's, uh, it doesn't like the, let me see here, if I did, uh, did refresh it. Clean install it. Let's see if if it will. No. So for some reason it, it doesn't compile now. I don't know what, what's happening. Uh, anybody can see what's going wrong. So it's saying the account request. Could it be some class I haven't uh, uh, done anything for? This one looks right. Did I update the POM file? No, that's it. I need to update the, the reference to version 2 as well. So wh when, when I've done that, it, it should compile fine. So, so, so this is the case where I have the source. For Dukeslib, it works uh, uh, so far. So let's uh, run this one. Uh, so it starts and, and runs uh, as it did before. And, and let's do the, um, the, uh, the uh, posts by the different, let's start with dukes.com. That's a 200, it, it's created with ID one. So everything was fine. You should do the same for, for uh, dukes.se, also a 200. Let's try with the non-valid email. And it says, okay, it's created it. So now I have, records in my database that, that are crappy. And it just happened because I upgraded from Spring Boot 2 to 3. So, so if, if I now do the, the, the get user, you can see I have an email here just called Duke. So now I have corrupt data in my database because the validation didn't work. And the reason for that is 
that the Hibernate validator, which comes with Spring Boot 3, looks for the Jakarta validation annotations, and it scans for those. It doesn't care about the Java X versions. So what do I do when I don't have the, the source code available? Well, luckily, we have the transformer, as I told you. So what I can do is, first, I'll, I'll just, uh, um, I'll, I'll just uh, copy the, um, let me see if I have, uh, the, the Duclib jar here, so I have it uh, uh, locally for me here. And I'll unzip it, just to, to ha have, a, have a look at it. Uh, and I'll put it in the old directory. So you can see in, in, in my old directory here, the Duke's uh, zip file here, the user class has some JavaX validation for the email. And, and that's, that, that's my problem. So what I can do now is to use the, the Eclipse Transformer, and that's a JAR file. It can also be a Maven plugin, but, but for, for this case, I have it as a, a, a JAR file, and I've just downloaded it. It's uh, the, the 05 version. It takes in a parameter, the Duclib JAR, and it can, you can also rename uh, whatever uh, output you have, but I'll just uh, use this one. So, so what it, it creates is, uh, if I just um, look here, now I have an output Duclib JAR. So let's uh, unzip this and, and have a look at it. Uh, output to the uh, new folder. And then uh, we'll, we'll look at the, the in, in the new folder here, we have the user class, and now it has a Jakarta email annotation validation. So the next thing I have to do is to just get this one into my, my uh, repository. So I'll, I'll uh, maybe an install file. So I take the the um, output, the, the wonder far, uh, wonder zero jar output jar, put it under the same artifacts, but but uh, increase the version number to two. Oh, sorry. Oh yeah, I have to uh, be in a Maven repository. So I'll just run the same there. So I'll uh, install it to to the, my Maven two repository, and th uh, th there I can. See now that in the Duclip folder, I have a version 1.0 and 2.0. The next thing I'm, I'm going to do is then update the uh, POM file of the Duke boot application, uh, where I have the, um, oh no, this was the dependency. Eh? So the Duke boot application to use the version I just deployed to my Maven repository. Then I'm, 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 I'm going to rebuild it and run it. And now when it's up and, and running, I can, I can post the uh, duke.com, it works fine. The duke.se, it works fine. Let's try the, the duke. And it says, bad request. So in this case, uh, it, it's back to, to uh, working. And uh, I can also look at the the, the, the users that I know have the right users in my database. So th these are kind of things that, that you need to think of when you're doing the, the Spring Boot m uh, migration as well. It depends a lot more on Jakarta EE than you actually think about. So with Spring, it's sort of the same steps as, as the Jakarta EE. It, it's after the Spring version, the Jakarta versions, fix the imports, then repeat for all your dependencies, and you have to tra transfer whatever libraries you don't have uh, uh, support for. There may also be that you're using some Java X properties, so these are some additional steps that may be there. And also the dynamic content may be there as well. So you see it's more or less the same steps as it would for a, a Jakarta e application. Let's move on uh, beyond Jakarta e, uh, 10, uh, Jakarta e 11. And with Jakarta 11, uh, we are uh, um, trying to establish a release cadence. It has been successful for uh, uh, Java to have the six-month cadence. That's a little bit too fast for us. So what we're aiming for is to try to release around a six-month or so after an LTS version of, of Java. And the next LTS version of Java is coming in September this year, uh, which is Java 21. So we want to release Jakarta 11 about six months after that, which would be Q1, Q2 uh, next year. That's what we're targeting. What we want to do 
is to uh, raise the API level of, of the Java to uh, 17 or 21. Uh, most likely 21 for those have the, who want to use it, but we don't want to force the APIs to compile to a higher version than they actually need. But what we will make sure is that the TCK and the implementations and every compatible product that want to support Jakarta 11 must run on 21. So 21 would be the new runtime basis for uh, Jakarta 11. And uh, the APIs will be compiled on, uh, on 11, 17, or 21, whatever. Uh, they want to use. But if you have dependencies, uh, 21 may be uh, the ones uh, they're compiled with. But that's not that important for us. The important thing for application developers is it's 21 you will be using. Jakarta config is a new specification that standardizes portable configuration. Uh, I'm not sure if it's going to make it for, for 11, maybe. Uh, but it's uh, kind of like microprofile config, uh, but to, uh, to uh, make easy environment aware uh, configuration. Jakarta MVC has been a long, uh, around for a long time. I'm not sure if that's going to make it either, uh, but we hope to. And sooner or later, server-side rendering will be back, and Jakarta MVC will be ready for you. Uh, it's, it's an easy uh, add-on to Jakarta REST. It's just a couple of annotations on top of Jakarta REST, and uh, you can do server-side rendering. Jakarta NoSQL is standardizing the uh, integration with uh, NoSQL databases. It's work in progress. It just needs the, the support from vendors to implement it, and it could be a version for um, Jakarta 11. Jakarta RPC is a specification that will standardize uh, gRPC within Jakarta E, which is something that uh, probably can be uh, very useful. Whether it will make it or not, I'm not sure. What I think will make it, or hope, is Jakarta data. And that's to standardize the repository pattern for data access. And that is a more or less complete ripoff of Spring Data. And we're not, we're proud of it. So, so, so we will have the same thing in Jakarta uh, called Jakarta Data. I, I really hope this one will uh, make it to Jakarta E11. To sum up, 9 was the kind of disruptive release. Uh, but we, I think with the tooling, with the IDEs, with the, with the guides, with the, with the transformers and stuff, we are, as, a, as an ecosystem, ready to cope with the Java X to Jakarta names with change, uh, so we'll get over it. Uh, Jakarta Town Platform has a lot of uh, changes. All the blue ones were changed, so it's a lot of new stuff uh, coming and things to make life easier for us developers. Core Profile is a brand new thing for smaller runtimes and also enable a native compilation. Jakarta 10 uh, has a baseline of uh, Jakarta 11 in the APIs, but uh, we're running the TCKs on 17, so, so J Java 17 would be the preferred version to use with Jakarta uh, 10, but you can use 11 as well. For more information about Jakarta E, look at jakarta.ee. Uh, jakarta uh, we have a blog aggregator, where my blog is aggregated as well. You can get your blog there. If you want a blog in some Java stuff, you can get your blog listed there. It's, list, it's on the side, uh, site how you can do it. Uh, I have a weekly uh, blog post and some occasional in between. The demo code for this is on my GitHub. You can search for Jakarta E Duke and you probably won't find any other repository than this. Or the Spring Duke will be the uh, Spring application. If you haven't done so already, you can win a t-shirt by filling out the Jakarta E developer survey. It's uh, like a five-minute thing. And it doesn't matter if you work with Jakarta uh, or not, if you're Spring developers, we are interested in your response. So here is an opportunity to win a t-shirt. And talking about swag, I have some, some nice uh, uh, socks here. So the, th the first three asking a question will get a pair of socks. So with that, I'm open for questions. Back there. Yes. Um, thank you very much. Um, with the um, Transformer package, did you remove uh, something from switching from Java X to JakarT or not? Because it would not work if you removed some annotation. I d uh, no, oh, I, if I removed anything uh, when it didn't work. No, I didn't remove any annotation. I, I, I just had forgotten to, to update the dependency version number. 
Okay, and did you just duplicate something too, or not? No, I just uh, updated to the version that I had uh, already uh, fixed, that, but forgot to, to take over. No, okay. it's no, nothing duplicated. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Yeah, so come here for your socks afterwards. Yes? So my question is, uh, you know how you have to convert the jar, right? Yes. Um, you have to convert the jar um, so that you know, the, all the inputs get um, adjusted. Could we not have used reflection at runtime? So the question is whether you could have used reflection on a runtime rather than converting to a jar. Yes, some runtimes do support the uh, have a built-in transformer from a Java X to Jakarta namespace, but that that are, are uh, most likely the 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 uh, Jakarta E runtimes like Open Liberty, uh, PyRI. I think a couple of them support that you can use the Java X namespace and they will do it on a runtime for you. But uh, Jetty and Tomcat, which Spring Boot uh, is built on, doesn't do that. Socks for you as well. One more pair. Yes. Uh, so let's say I'm using a uh, technology from uh, that was discontinued in 2013, and I want now to uh, move from Javax to Jakarta, but not switch out that uh, te that specific technology. Is the solution to run it through the Eclipse transformer and get a uh, Jakarta compatible version of that code. Yeah. Yeah. So the question is whether uh, whether if, if it's an amba abandoned API out there on the Java X namespace that I absolutely need to use, uh, how can I do that? You would do that. One way of doing it is to use like I did with the Duke's lib thing here. But you have to be a little bit careful because depending on what license that particular libraries under, you should be careful by distributing that. So using it in your local repository and just building your stuff, that would be fine. But if you're distributing it as a part of your application, it could be license implications. So you have to be a little bit careful. So the best way there would be to actually to contribute that change to that project and help them do it. I think we're out of time. So those who, who uh, earned socks, come up here and get them. And thank you very much for listening and enjoy the rest of the conference.